Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Colorado Rockies franchise. We are in the month of July, straight off of the All Star break, and now we are looking to improve our team as we head into the trade deadline. Now, the story of this year is Trevor Story. What will we do with him? Hitting 284, he has improved quite a bit since that terrible start to start the season. He was hitting like 211. Now he's got up to 280s, and that's very, very good. It will definitely help his trade value. Now looking at other guys we could possibly trade, I thought about Sam Hillier, but he's still only 27 years old, hitting 235. I'm still going to give him a little bit of a chance here. In the bullpen, Scott Olberg. He's had some issues, but he actually still has good numbers, but hopefully moving him out of that closer role will help him. Jordan Sheffield is a guy that I really, really want to groom and just improve over time. I, I love his potential since moving him up. He is low in the overalls, but I think we could use a guy like him, you know, a spot guy to come in. He's not going to pitch a ton of relief innings, but I like him right now. We got to get those walks down. His strikeout to walk ratio is 28 to 16. John Gray, how about him? He's having a decent season. It's it's about average, but at least better than what I would have expected him. His whip kind of came up a little bit. He was in the 120s before, but now he's in 131. Ben Bowden is interesting. He has a 133 whip. He is a decent pitcher, but that strikeout to walk ratio, 34 to 29. I'm looking to maybe even moving him down. But the guy that's really struggling is Austin Gomber. 165 whip, 4 12 ERA. I mean, that's just terrible for a starter. I'm probably going to be looking to replace him at some point this season or just maybe just moving him to the bullpen. I'm not sure if I want to move him down, but maybe just moving him to the bullpen, maybe getting a different look. Now, what I really want to improve at the trade deadline is our outfield arms. As you just see right here, Charlie Blackman has a terrible arm. He's going to be moving to left field. Right now, we have him in right field. Sam Hillier does not have a great arm. He's athletic, but does not have a great arm. 71 throw power on that arm. And then Zach Veen is maybe the only guy that has the strongest arm in the outfield right now. 73 arm. And that potential is at an A. So by the time he gets up to the show, he'll probably be around 80. So I want to just look to see if there are some guys with at least B potential with a good arm. And I, that's the kind of guy I want to trade uh, Trevor Story for. Now, Christian Pache did actually get traded to the Yankees. So he is officially off the board for us because we were thinking about going after him. And he got traded for Masami Hisakawa, who was one of our subscriber recruits, who did actually fracture his arm. He's out one to two months. But he was hitting 346 at AAA. He was hitting absolutely great. You could just see, you know, the ratings look way higher than what they are because I changed them in this franchise. So, uh, but he has been improving all, off of the changes that we made. Trey Monroe is actually another guy here. He's an, another one of our subscriber recruits. Good arm, 80. And the accuracy is a little low. And the speed is a little low at 45. But his hitting is very, very good. His vision's at 70. And he's playing pretty good. Uh, I mean, he's uh, his attributes are pretty good. He's only at eight ball right now so he's not getting any you know stat boost then there's will benson now i like will benson a lot he's hitting 278 on base percentage is pretty good at 355 he's slugging 470 and he actually has 59 rbis at triple a 15 home runs that's pretty good his strikeout ratio is very very high he's almost got 100 strikeouts already but i want to keep him in mind Isaac Paradis, is that how you say it? He is 22 years old. He's a third baseman. He's not an outfielder, but he has a good arm. Maybe this is a guy we can possibly move to the outfield. And he does have some MLB experience. He's only hitting 238, though, at the AAA level. So I go back to Will Benson. He is a B potential. He is the number 40 overall prospect in baseball right now. His vision is very, very low, but he has that sniper quirk which means that he has a really good arm, a really accurate arm, and he's got 89 on it, and he actually leads AAA East in RBIs. So I'm going to make my move for Will Benson. I think that this is a good guy to go after, but after offering Trevor Story to the Indians, that's it. 
I mean, that is absolutely it. They do not want us to add any more players to this trade. And I don't want to give up a whole lot to get a prospect. And he's kind of, you know, a guy that we're taking a little bit of risk on because he has that uh, low vision. He strikes out a lot. So that is going to do it. One for one. Trevor Story for Will Benson. We possibly have a future star on our roster. That will move up Brendan Rodgers. It's time. It's time to put up or shut up. He's been the number one prospect for the last, what, five seasons in the Colorado Rockies organization. Now it's time to move him up, see what he's got. He's going to get a longer rope just because we need to really see what he has because Rodgers is going to be a guy that's going to need at least a year and a half of exposure to the MLB to really see like, hey, is this guy for real or is this guy really going to be terrible? So I want to make another trade and I want to get another prospect just in case. Now, I'm looking around and I do offer up a couple of guys here. I want to offer up Casey Golden first. He's a triple A uh, player. He see potential in his mid 20s, about high 60s overall and see what I get. But nothing really sticks out here. So I decide to add Colton Welker, a guy that's been at the MLB level this year. He's got B potential, 69 overall. I mean, very, very good, to be honest with you. He's got a bright future, but he just hasn't fit what we do because I want a third baseman that's going to be a better fielder than he is. And he's not going to be potentially a great fielder. He's just going to be what he is, probably like 60s, maybe low 70s. I, I think it's just going to be 60s, and his arm is just going to be you know not even average so i decide to open up these two to trade and then i get a offer from the royal 17 year old eric pena center fielder he is 17 years old actually 18 i'm gonna adjust his age him and will benson actually have their age off the default rosters has their age off by one year eric pena is 18 years old hitting 417 at double a slugging 708 and not too many at bats but he's off to a good start. An A potential, if I get another A potential outfielder along with Zach Veen and then Will Benson just came in, I think this will help us. And I said I wanted a guy with a good arm. At 18 years old and 64 overall, he's got a 75 arm. He's got a good arm right now. I decide to try to go after somebody else too. So I look at Jacob Kunis. Kunis is a good relief pitcher. I need another relief pitcher at the major league level to kind of help us out because our reliefs our bullpen isn't doing too well this year, but I want something that will help us out and boost us forward just a little bit. 28-year-old Jacob Kunis, I like what he can bring to the table. He's got a good pitch repertoire, and we decide to add him to the trade, but we can't figure out anything that will um, kind of make this even. So I decide to add another depth guy in Chris Owings. So we just trade away maybe three of our depth guys, quote unquote, in our organization. Guys that are around high 60s, low 70s overall. Chris Owings is 70. He is 29 years old, but I just don't see a future with him. Like we're not, we're not really committed to him. He's 29 and I think he will definitely balance the trade out. And that's the trade we will do. In my opinion, Eric Pena could end, end up being the best player in our outfield in the future. At a potential, I think he's got a bright future. He's the same age as Zach Veen. Both of those two guys will probably be the future of our outfield. But we'll have to see. Eric Pena, is, he's got a whole lot of potential, to be honest. Especially if he can hit well at the AA level. I'm going to put him down there. He's going to be great. So our lineup is going to look like that. We're going to put Brendan Rodgers in the two hole on one side and the eight hole on the other. And let's just look at the bigger trades around the league that happened. Jose Abreu got traded to the Red Sox for Kenta Wilson, one of our custom recruits, and Bobby Dowback, who was 73 overall and 25 years of age. So I decide to move up a couple of guys. Greg Bird is one of them, but he is hurt. So I'm going to wait until he is healing up with that broken foot. Then he will move up. Fun fact, he went to high school in Colorado. Then I will look at other guys. Um, I did look at uh, some depth guys, but I don't want to ruin their growth, obviously. So I'm going to leave a lot of our prospects down. So I decided to go to free agency, move up or uh, sign Greg Garcia. We have the budget to sign somebody for the rest of the season. Why not? So we will offer him what he's asking for one year, $1.7 million. That will be the contract we give him. We had to 
uh, make a roster adjustment to make room for him. And then I decided to go back after Matt Kemp. He played on the Rockies last season. So let's just sign him to what he wants. One year, 2.3. That doesn't hurt us at all. We're obviously not going to spend a lot of money in free agency, but one year deals like this we can do. So that's going to do it for the trade deadline and the trades we make. I love bringing Pena in and also Will Benson. Benson's going to have a lot of uh, potential with his RBIs. I want to cut down on those strikeouts. His vision is very, very low. We'll have to see what happens there with his development. So here we go. Here is Brendan Rodgers' debut at the MLB level. He already has one at bat this year. That was in the opener. And here he gets a pitch right over the middle. And that was crushed but is going to stay in the yard as he's facing Blake Snell. How about that pitching matchup to open up your big league career? Rodgers back at the plate for his second at bat here in the top of the third inning now. One out, 2-2 two -two count, and he swings at some high heat out of the zone, getting a little anxious that time, and he swings and misses. He's 0 for 2. Joe Musgrove out of the bullpen. Surprised to see that here as he is going to face uh, Brendan Rodgers here in the top of the fifth inning with Charlie Blackman on deck. 3-2 count, and that one is going to be out of the zone, and Rodgers at least gets on base. You know, one thing about some of these players, you know, if they don't hit well for average, they need to be able to get on base. Hopefully Rodgers can do both, as here he is up in the seventh inning, 0 for 2 in his game, a pitch on the right side of the plate, and that is going to be just a pop-up. As you just see, we were just under that pitch. We end up losing this game versus the Padres. The Padres and the Dodgers are running away with this division. The Padres will likely get a wild card spot, but we'll see how that goes. Miami's up next, and we face them in the bottom of the 10th inning. Romel Tapia at home. As you can just see, as we return home, the new infield dirt. I know you guys said you wanted to kind of make that a little darker, so I decided to switch the dirt. Here's Romel Tapia at the plate here in the bottom of the 10th. A deep fly ball. That one should move the runner over to third as the runner does tag up. One out here in this inning. Greg Garcia, the new free agent signing at the plate. Can he come through for the Rockies? 2-1 count. A pitch right over the middle, and it's hit to right field. That one will be a walk-off for the Rockies. Elias Diaz comes in to score, and Garcia is the hero in his first couple of games here signing with the Rockies. I like him for depth. I'm not sure if I'll keep him long term, but we'll see. It's This is more or less of a tryout for the future for Kemp and Garcia. Now we get to the Giants series here. As you can just see, we are on the road at Oracle Park, and now it is in the top of the seventh. Blackman with two home runs, and he watches that one on the inside part, tried to go deep for a third time. And now he gets one more opportunity here in the top of the ninth. This is a 2-0 count. We're expecting a really good pitch over the middle. And we get a low one, and we do fish for that one. Blackman grounds out. He is still top two in batting average in the NL. So that's a good sign for him. But we do end up getting the loss in that game, 3-2 off of uh, Black or yeah Blackman. He played extremely well, but we still didn't get enough there. So here we go in the bottom of the ninth inning once again to the San Diego Padres with a chance to walk it off again. This time Elias Diaz scored the first time. This time he's at the plate. So facing Emilio Pagan on the mound. Guys on first and second here, no outs. So we could possibly bunt these runners over, but in this game they bunt way too hard. They don't really lay it down softly, so let's see what happens. Here with a 1-2 count, Elias Diaz goes deep to right field, and it makes it over the right fielder's glove. We will round second, round third actually, and now we do score a run. It's one to one here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now guys on second and third, no outs. So let's see what they do. They do not actually uh, walk Greg Garcia. As let's see what he does here. First pitch is way up there. He watches that one, 1-0 one -oh count. 1-0 -oh pitch is on, ground ball up the middle, but it is fielded right to the pitcher in a perfect first out here as they don't walk Daza to load up the bases. Maybe they should have done this to possibly set up a double play ball, but here is a pitch over the middle, and Daza doesn't miss. 1-0 count. He makes the pitcher pay, and that one will do it. I'm surprised they did not walk Daza in that situation. That was a double play situation, 
and they decided to keep pitching to him. And Daza comes through with the game winner. I love what Jonathan, Jonathan Daza is doing this year. He definitely stepped up in a big way. This is his big first big league action as far as playing a full season. And I like him. I like him a lot. He's in his, uh, I'd say, mid to upper 20s. He's 27 years old. And I like him. I, I think he's going to hold down an outfield spot for at least a foreseeable future. So now we get into another situation which is similar. Here's Garrett Hampson at the plate this time. And now with guys on first and second, we do try to bunt the runner over. But that one didn't work out. But now the next play is a bunt. And that is going to be almost a double play. But good thing Garrett Hampson has 96 speed. It looked like the first baseman caught it. It looks like it just hit the ground. Sam Hilliard at the plate now. Men on first and second. Ground ball to first. This one's a hard one. And he steps on first instead of throwing home. And Rodgers does score. And that one will do it versus the Diamondbacks. A few walk-offs here in this episode as we move through the month of July into the month of August and into September as well. And the Rockies get another win. But as you can just see, you know, we're not doing pretty consistent. Like, we're always in these close games. We're not, you know, having good wins. They're always close. But we come out of that game, Jonathan Daza, he's injured, fractured leg. Two to three months. That one will end his season. Hit 264 this year. I really loved what I saw from him. I think he has a whole lot of potential in the outfield. He's a good fielder with a decent arm, decent reaction, decent accuracy. He can do it all in the outfield right now. Now, looking at our injured list, he tore Takahashi is there, and then DeAnthony Pierre is also there. He has a fractured hand. Hopefully, he returns for uh, the end of the season, but I don't think he will. I think he's done for the year as well. So now we move to the end of August now, and our team is not doing too well. But let's just check on the top prospects in baseball. How about James Lawson, who is one of our subscriber recruits? He is number 10. Davis Morgan, a left-handed pitcher. He's very, very good for the Blue Jays. He will be at 11 there. And then uh, Hisakawa is still 29. He was in that trade for Christian Pache. And look at him. I mean, he is back from injury in about a week. So he's going to be right there back with his new squad. And then Will Benson is still in the top 50. I'm looking forward to what he can develop into. He has the power. He has the potential with his bat. So we'll have to see. Other notable prospects in our organization who are doing well. How about Gregory Teixeira? He's, he's hitting in the 260s. I highlighted him a couple times. Ryan Valade, that's how you say it, Valade. I looked it up, 217 on the year. He would actually possibly be the competition, the top competition at least, for Brendan Rodgers. We'll see how his development goes. John Storm, who was an all-star, he's hitting 225 at third base. Trez Jenkins, a closer who is absolutely dominating. Now, I will highlight this later, but I will give out a potential boost for top prospects who uh, were minor leaguers of the year, one with bat and one with the bullpen and one as a starting pitcher, they will be three boosts at the end of the season. But I will highlight that when the time comes around. And now we are here at the end of August. Charlie Blackman is really the only player hitting over 300. He's hitting 324. Matt Kemp is right now, but only in limited action. Greg Garcia in his limited action is hitting 275. Hopefully he can keep that up. Like I said, this is more of an audition for them, so hopefully they do. Romeo Tapia got that average up to 245, hitting decently. Garrett Hampson at 250. His OBP is 321, which is pretty decent. And then um, looking at the other guys, nobody really of note that's absolutely destroying the baseball. But I do like what I see from Garrett Hampson. At least he's getting on base as kind of that leadoff hitter. In our bullpen, you know, one guy that's really uh, – I really want to – improve a little bit more is Derek Rodriguez I want to get him some more MLB exposure one three two whip and then also like I said earlier Jordan Sheffield Austin Gomber will move to the bullpen he's not doing well at all Daniel Bard will probably be moved down one eight six whip and Herman Marquez is uh doing pretty well as our uh ace but you know he's probably not gonna be the ace in the future future but right now he's doing decently 128 whip sends a tell 125 whip seven and eight as well on the season and then herman marquez does lead us in strikeouts with 135. 
So that's going to do it here in this episode. The Rockies are 60 and 71. We just hover around 500. That's just what we do. And that's not even going to be close to competing with the Dodgers or the Padres either. So September call-ups are a day away. But next episode, I do plan on quickly uh, getting through the middle of September. But I want to focus on our double-A squad. They could be heading to the playoffs in double-A. So that's going to be really interesting. I want to cover that a little bit more. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think of the story trade. And also picking up Eric Pena, who's going to be a bright uh, piece in our outfield. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Talking on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide, that's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.